morning and welcome to episode 24 sorry of the Made in the AM podcast. My name is Fee and I'm coming to you from Denmark and confession first. Today I am coming to you completely undone. No makeup, not even powder, nothing. And I just noticed that I have a stain here so complete mess. I don't want to excuse that, but just, it's the reality. And just, might as well put it out there. I made no effort for you today. I hope you'll survive. You still get me. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not. But I do feel a bit like a naked mole rat. And if you Google that, Google uh, image search that, I, I warned you. Anyway, we're not here to talk about me. Although it's a very nice subject, if I do say so myself. We're here to talk about crafting. As I said, my name is Fee. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter as well, but nothing really interesting or crafting related goes on there. And you and uh, of course Ravelry as Bungo F, and I always put it in the down bar, uh, just because it's a Danish name. It's my name, and I don't expect people outside of Denmark being able to uh, spell it. And it has a double A, so I'm not even counting on all Danes being able to get it right. <laughs> so, disclaimer out of the way. If you Google search the naked mole rat, let's put a nice image into your head. Knitting. Now, the first thing I have to show you is my, I call it my TARDIS knockoff dress. It's not a TARDIS dress, it has nothing to do with the TARDIS other than the inspiration for this was called by the knitter her TARDIS dress. And I am copying her modifications. Um, well, I am inspired by her modifications uh, to knit my own dress bottom up. Um, a whole lot of stockinette. The yellow marker down here, oh that's my finger, down here, is where I was last time. And comparing this to other stuff, it knits up really fast because I am using this. This is the Wollmeister Merino DK um, in the Nautilus colorway. It is a darker blue with a bit more green uh, in reality. But yeah, I am adding pockets to this. It's going to be a knee length dress uh, with the ribbing to pull it in below. And then it's just going to be straight up to um, my hips, and then a bit of uh, a bit of waist shaping, and then it'll end up with a colorwork uh, yoke. And the sleeves will have colorwork both down here at the bottom. Uh, I'm saying down here because it's going to be three quarter length sleeves, uh, but it'll have colorwork down here at the bottom, and of course around the, the yolk, or where it meets the yolk. The original pattern is a drops uh, cardigan pattern, knit up in a fingering weight. I think the modification, modified version that I'm copying is knit in a I think it's a worsted weight version. 
and I'm doing DK but this knits up as a heavy DK so I'm getting around 20 stitches per 10 centimeters which is what's helping me knit this up so pretty fast um, the green marker is just for counting rows but yeah um, what I was going to say is that I'm going to add pockets I think I'm about 10 centimeters from where I'll put in my waist yarn because I'm doing an afterthought style just a plain afterthought um, pocket on the sides nothing fancy so yeah that's that so that's got a bit of a workout um, and I could have and would have knit more on both this and the other things I'm showing you but I I haven't been feeling like 100% these past couple of weeks I've probably mentioned it it's been I've felt like I'm coming down with a cold or something but it's not really settling turns out I have an iron deficiency so that needs to be changed so yeah I've spent a lot of time thinking about knitting and not knitting and just feeling tired and I'm just, I'm tired of feeling tired <laughs> so yeah but now I know the cause I can do something about it The other thing I've been working on is something else that you've seen. It's knit up in this Counts as a Blaze um, Fake Your Own Death or Fake Your Death in uh, the Neon Pop version. And this little end here is. Volumized twin, and because I have to wind up yarn soon, I brought the next skein. These are the first two skeins, by the way, and I'm saying that because you're going to see how far I've gotten in a little while. But this is what I'm using it's twin, and it's a it's a name I can't pronounce. It's Nasa Bonkuhu. Kuhu. Um, as far as I remember, it's the Turkish Evil Eye Amulet that wards off the Evil Eye, I think. But it's, it's an amulet that's mainly blue, white and then black, I think, for the eye part itself. Really nice blue colour. But yeah. Almost done with the first skein of the Volmeiser. And Volmeiser comes in a 150 gram put up. So you might have guessed that I'm getting pretty far. This is the Breathing Space by Via Velamaki. It's from Interpretations Volume 3, which is the one she does every year with. Um, Hohi Locatelli, and I noticed on Hohi's uh, Instagram that there's a new one coming in February. Um, I haven't seen preview photos, I don't know if there are any. Uh, it's published by the same people who do Pom Pom Quarterly, so if there are any previews, they might be up there. I haven't checked it. But as you can see, I've gone pretty far. I have a blue marker showing where I was last time and yeah I like this side better because it looks like I've done a whole lot more than I have if you look at the other side because that's the magic of short rows 
Oh, I have modified this a bit um, in two parts so far. One is that the short rows start past my bust line, uh, which you can't really see right now. Um, oh, sorry, didn't mean to kick you. But yeah, they st start below my bust line. And I've done that because when you have a large chest, or generally if you have boobs, stopping and dividing your boobs halfway, as the pattern does if you do it as written, it's just not a flattering look. I like my breasts, I don't want to chop them in half. Uh, that's one modification I did, so basically I just started the short rows later. The other modification I did is that I didn't do as many short rows as the pattern calls for. Um, that's just a personal preference. Uh, to be honest, I don't want it to be as asymmetric as the pattern uh, shows it. And also, when you do the short rows, you increase quite a lot, actually. And you only do waist shaping on the side where you didn't do short rows. So you will, no matter how you do it, you'll end up with a one side flaring out a bit more and the other being more fitted and I'd like to try to get them to match up a bit more while still retaining the same look. But yeah, as you can see I'm getting ready to to put in the next skein and just to show you the difference between the two sides. It might not seem like a whole lot but just remember I didn't do all of the short rows for this. Um, I think I needed to do three more maybe. So I did a little more than a half. A little more than half the short rows. Yeah. It's my knitting and if it ends up not looking good, I'm the one who has to wear it. So. But I really like the way the colours come together. Now, the third thing I've been knitting is a bit of a blast from the past. In December 2014, yes, let's repeat that, December 2014, I test knit a sock for a Danish designer. All you had to do was finish one sock, so I did, and my test knit was marked as completed. Now, one sock doesn't help when you have two feet, but I didn't cast on the second one right away, which I should have. We're now in January 2017 and I have cast on the second sock. The difference between these two is that I did already wash and block this sock and this has been freshly made. So it's not as soft, not as stretchy as the other one. But that'll all even out in the wash. I am knitting this using Vagia silk, which also helps with the uh, drape. And why this is a much nicer and drapier sock than this is at the moment. I mean, this could nearly stand on its own. Well, this just hangs. I'm Halfway down 
the leg of the boot, leg of the sock. And I'm knitting this up on 2.5 millimeter needles because that's what the original is. And it's a 64 stitch sock. <coughs> Sorry. My new go to is a 72 stitch sock on a 2.25 millimeter needle. So it's it's not what I'm doing now, but they match that this way and this sock does fit on my foot. So why change something that works? Hopefully this won't have to wait until December 2017 to get done. It is a fun little pattern once you get into it, but I do have to have the charge charge chart nearby. Otherwise I forget which row I'm on. And I'm not completely sure that the pattern was ever published. Um I don't think it was, but it is called Balkan, uh, named for an area uh, on uh, Bornholm, and these are like the little waves that you get in the sand from uh, from the tide. I've been to that beach, actually, not that. That matters in any way. Now, that was all the knitting. No finished objects. If I started the sock earlier, I could have probably finished it. But I didn't. I just started it the other night. Despite having talked about starting it. Uh, because having a sock, a single sock that's more than two years old. And never having cast on for the mate. Not a good idea. Anyway, all the missing. There has been some sewing. Last week I showed you this little cutie. And now it's done. I mean... I wish I had something like that when I was two years old. Which is roughly the size this is. I didn't. But now another little girl can have a unicorn jumper, a sweatshirt. Not a lot to say about it, it's just the pattern is from uh, Bora and it's actually, it is actually supposed to be a dress. So it's, it's a dress that has this top part here and then sewn onto it, it has a skirt part so it looks like your child has a sweatshirt with a skirt underneath, which looks super cute, but I was like, I don't really have a fabric in mind that would go for the skirt. Um, if I were to do it, I would probably pull a color from, from the main, but A, I don't have that, B, I didn't have a a recipient in mind and kids can be quite fiddly with what they want to wear so I thought just do the uh, the sweater and or oh, sweatshirt and they can pair it with whatever they want so yeah that's done look at those unicorns I'm glad I have my own, or else I would be so jealous of the little girl who gets to wear this. Because it will go to a little girl. I have the little girl in mind. I just have to get it to her mother. Speaking of mothers, I have one too. And I also had this fabric. With the little micro dolls on it. 
and this is just an empty cover. I have two of them. Now, these pillow covers were done completely freehand without any pattern and just a, an idea of what I wanted to do. I have put in an invisible zipper which I struggled a bit with because I had to remember how to do it. It's something I've only done twice before, so had to try and remember. And it was the first time doing it on my new machine, so where the foot looks different than it did on my own machine because it's a well, I shouldn't say because it's a different uh, maker because some of them look exactly the same, but yeah. It is a different maker. I use every bit of scrap of... Um, I was about to say yarn. Yeah, I meant fabric that I had of this because I only had a little over one meter and uh, this is for a 50 by 50 centimeter pillow for my mom's new sofas. I am going to visit my parents um, this weekend, so and my mom does. My mom knows I'm coming. My mom doesn't know that I a had this fabric, b made the pillows for her. My dad knows, and he's already seen a picture of them. Basically, the same I uh, posted on Instagram. I'd like, even if it's not perfect, and yes, I know I put it, the zipper at the top by mistake. Um, I don't really care. Definitely don't care enough to rip it out. I would probably put it on the side if I were to make it again. Or the bottom. I don't know. But it's at the top and it's, that's just the way it is. Now, if I had made, the, the pillows I found were either 40 or 50 centimeters squared. My zipper is 40 centimeters. But I think it, it should work, even if it doesn't open all the way. I mean, it's not like you have to take it out every day anyway, so it doesn't matter if I have to struggle to get it in or out. Or my dad, when he has to wash the covers. The zipper is because, well, you have to be able to wash the covers. Um, I talked it over with my dad, who's the one who, who does all her washing, and he agreed that they need to come off. If it had just been for me, I would just have sewn the pillow into it and not cared. But it's not for me, so I pretend to care. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. And no, I didn't press it, I didn't iron it, I didn't do anything. I just sewed it yesterday and declared it done. So, as I said, going to visit my parents this weekend. Um, I leave tomorrow. And my dad and I are going to the cinema to watch the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. Because he hasn't seen it and I'm a fan. And he wanted to go see it. He talked about going to see it. Only he couldn't find any times that weren't like in the middle of the afternoon or something. And he didn't want to do that. 
and just by chance I found out that, oh, they're showing it in the evening on Saturday, so at least this Saturday. So I just phoned him and said, hey, want to go and watch it? So yeah, now we're going. I will hopefully get some work done on my sock so I don't have to have that. Oh, right, you don't have a partner. Um, guilty feeling every time I open my sock drawer because it's just... We all know that machines eat socks. So my sock drawer, or underwear drawer, has a little area because I've compartmentalized it. So it has a little area where I put my single socks. So every time I have a single sock, it goes in there and then I can pair them up whenever I find the partner. This poor abandoned little sock has been there two years now, all on its lonesome, seeing other socks getting paired off. Yeah, so I'm hoping to give it its partner. Uh, might not be able to do it by the next podcast, but we shall see. In the meantime, I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you next Thursday. Bye.